Winco is already what I would consider to be a successful chain of supermarkets, though maybe not the most well-known, just yet anyway. There are about 140 of them exclusively located west of the Mississippi River, with most of them actually sitting along the west coast, suggesting that most of the people watching from that specific part of the country will know exactly what I'm talking about here, while everyone else will likely be in the dark. For those who are not familiar, I would describe the Winco shopping experience as being like a combination of going to Costco and Walmart. You will better understand why I say that as the video goes on, but those are two extremely successful stores that in many ways are good to be compared to. The reason I'm making this video is because I believe Winco has a lot of potential, and that is seemingly the popular belief. They are a well-liked, unique store with a stable foundation that may one day be opening near you. So for today, I'm going to outline five reasons as to why I believe Winco stands out from most grocery stores and may potentially grow to be one of the biggest in the country. Starting off by acknowledging how big they already are. Even though most of the country still doesn't know about Winco, that does not by any means make them small. I do want to mention that there does seem to be a lot of interest in Winco, at least among my audience, because on my website, this is among the highest voted topics for me to make a video about. 140 stores may not sound impressive compared to many of the larger chains with thousands of locations, but these are strategically concentrated and they are fairly large buildings. The average Winco is around 90,000 square feet with a high turnover, so each of them is responsible for more sales than you might expect. Just look at the direction they've been heading. Their sales have doubled since 2010, reaching their current level of $8.5 billion a year, a figure that already makes them the 15th largest supermarket chain in the US, and Forbes ranks them as the 60th largest private company in the country as well. Already impressive numbers that I think you'll agree very much seem to be on an upward trend. The next reason I believe Winco has so much potential is because of how thoughtful they've been when expanding into new markets. It has been a big part of building their stable foundation. Ralph Ward and Bud Williams founded the company in 1967 when they opened a store called Waremart in Boise, Idaho. It was called Waremart because, much like today, it was a discount warehouse type store, so I'm sure you're starting to see the similarities to Costco. The following year, they were successful enough to open their second store, followed by dozens of others in the 1960s. 70s and 80s, slowly but steadily scaling the concept, mostly throughout the Pacific Northwest, even operating multiple Cub Foods franchises in the 1990s until 1998. That year, right when the franchising agreement was set to expire, they opened their own massive distribution center in Oregon, and potentially even more significant, they changed their name. Now, I have to give them credit, because the name Winco is actually way more clever than it may initially sound. Winco is supposed to be short for Winning Company, which which is already a positive sounding name, but it also doubles as an acronym for each of the states in which they operated stores at the time, Washington, Idaho, Nevada, California, and Oregon. So yeah, easily one of the most ingenious names you'll ever hear, but specifically fitting because those were the only five states with Winco stores for 24 years. They were stabilizing their presence by placing their full attention on those existing markets until 2009. See, being a low price discount store, they actually did really well during the recession and took it advantage of that by opening stores in entirely new markets and haven't stopped doing it ever since. They have been entering a new state every two to three years. First it was Utah, then Arizona, Texas, Oklahoma, Montana, clearly making their way east much faster than before, but keep in mind, still at a relatively slow pace. They have 40 states to go, and if they continue at this pace of one state every two to three years, it could easily take over a century before they are truly a nationally recognized brand. But I do think that's impressive in a way, being so patient. They are always looking for the benefit that will be there years in the future, which for a private company or even an individual, I think that is a perfect approach. See, what they do is they buy all of these promising locations while they're still cheap, and then they do nothing with them for maybe five years. They watch how the population grows, the housing market, the other businesses that open in the area, and then when they feel the time is right, they build their store, have a grand opening, and typically start attracting a lot of customers right away. As I keep saying, it is an extremely slow, methodical, and inexpensive approach that 
almost ensures that they will be successful when they finally decide to expand into a new area. What I'm trying to say is if you do have a new Winco open up near you, that place is likely to stay. Another reason I believe Winco has such high potential is because of those low prices. They actually call themselves the supermarket low price leader because anyone who has shopped there could tell you that their prices are almost unbeatable. And they're able to have such low prices because they do so many things to save money. Possibly the most impactful one is the fact that they buy most of their inventory in high quantities straight from the factories or even the farms. It is the whole system where they cut out the middleman and get discounts from bulk purchases, but that is the beauty of it. Unlike other stores with a similar model, like Costco, they don't require the customer to buy it in large quantities, nor do they require a membership card to shop there. It's what allows them to have features like their famous promotional area labeled the Wall of Values and their bulk bin merchandise at the back of the store where you can select your own quantity of beans, rice, candy, nuts, pastas, cereal, or whatever else you might want. They also save money by having a basic appearance in the store. I'm talking about not many displays or fixtures or decorations. A lot of merchandise is simply displayed in the original cases from the factory. Every store has the exact same layout, simplifying initial building costs and ongoing inventory purchases. Uh, there are windows in the roof to let sunshine in during the day to lower energy costs. Customers are expected to bag the groceries themselves, uh, saving on labor. They don't accept credit cards to save money on processing fees. They didn't even accept debit cards until 2006. Oh, a big one is that they spend very little money on advertising, typically sending some ads in the mail when a new location opens or a couple times throughout the year, maybe a few commercials, but that's about the extent of it. They mostly rely on organic word of mouth advertising, you know, customers having a positive experience and then telling other people about it. That is the core of the strategy. People love to see low prices, so that's their number one priority, and they do almost anything they can to make that possible, leading me to my next reason, responding to competitors. Back when they first started in Boise, Idaho, when it was still called Waremart, their biggest competitor was Albertsons. It's another grocery store founded in Boise that was already approaching 200 locations, so the initial strategy was to simply make sure that their prices were lower than Albertsons. That right there was like their top priority, and they did it in part by making their stores even more basic than they are today. Customers were given these flat carts and grease pencils as they walked in because they were expected to write the price of each item as they got it. I don't know where in the world you would still see that today, but as they grew and time progressed, Walmart became their new biggest concern. In fact, one of the reasons they changed their name from Walmart is because it sounded too much like Walmart. In the 1990s, Walmart was expanding fast. They literally became the biggest retailer in the country, oftentimes entering an area with an existing Walmart, so people were understandably getting them confused. Now, however you feel about Walmart, I think most would agree that it is a hard task to try to keep up with them based on price. But amazingly, all of these cost-cutting techniques have been effective enough to allow Winco to do that. I mean, this was a big concern when Winco set out to expand into new areas. Would they be able to attract customers from existing Walmarts? And generally, the answer has been yes. At the time, Winco's VP of Public and Legal Affairs said, in terms of pricing, we are very much on a par with Walmart super centers. We think we can compete nose to nose with them. Even respected industry experts have repeatedly praised Winco when compared to Walmart, oftentimes making bold statements like saying that they're the only competitor that Walmart is really afraid of and that they are Walmart's worst nightmare. For anyone watching this who has shopped at both Walmart and Winco, I would very much like to hear your comparisons in the comments as far as price and everything else. Which leads me into my final reason behind their potential, they seem to have some happy employees. Now, please, before you say anything, I realize everything is not perfect. So if you are an unhappy employee at Winco, that is perfectly understandable. There have been lawsuits involving discrimination, protests by unions, but from what I can tell, nothing big enough to have a major impact. And there are some positive aspects that you wouldn't find among most of their competitors. There are advantages as far as treatment and medical benefits, but the biggest thing, the one that I'm looking at here, is the employee stock ownership plan. Remember, the company was founded by Ralph Ward and Bud Williams in 1967, but in the 1970s, Williams sold his part of the company to Ward, making him the full owner. Then, in 1985, when there were 17 stores in operation, Ralph Ward passed away and the ownership of everything was passed on to his family. Now, at that point, the new CEO and president, William Long, organized this buyout where essentially all of the employees of the stores purchased the company for about $10 million. The following year, an employee stock ownership plan was established and ever 
ever since, Winco has been owned by the people who work there. Today, their 20,000 plus employees make it the second largest employee owned company in the country. Just think about the significance of that. These employees back in the 1980s were essentially early investors in Winco, a company that has performed far better than the stock market, delivering an annual 18% compounded return ever since, meaning $5,000 of stock that was given to an employee back when the plan first started would now be valued at over 800,000. There are literally hundreds of people currently working at Winco that have become millionaires from this stock ownership plan. The idea behind the structure is the fact that the employees would have pride in owning it. If they benefit when the company does well, then they will go the extra mile to ensure that the company does well. Theoretically, leading to stores that are cleaner, faster, more organized, friendlier, all things, by the way, that their competitor Walmart does not have the best reputation for. So then, if Winco is offering competitive prices, along with a more pleasant shopping experience, then yeah, maybe they are Walmart's worst nightmare. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Winco? If you've been there, do you go there often? And what do you like or dislike most about them? On the other end, if you're from the rest of the country that doesn't have them yet, has this video made you curious about them? And finally, the big question, what do you see for their future? Did I provide enough reason for you to believe that Winco will slowly become more and more significant? Or are you still skeptical? And any other thoughts you have about the cleverly named Winco, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.